bit of scruffinate. Just finished a sketchbook <laughs> and I get sad when I finish sketchbooks. I'm sad and excited at the same time. I mean, I'm sad because it's something that I've carried around with me every day for six months or so. Um, and excited because I get to do it again. I get to make best friends with a brand new sketchbook. But I really enjoyed working in this sketchbook. It's a nice size book. I like the paper. I um, made it my own. So this is originally a Life Noble sketchbook and I didn't like the floppy cover. So I got some really hard, like 1700 GSM box card, which I use for the back of my prints, just to keep prints nice and flat when they're flying across the world. So I used that, I stuck it down and I had this uh, piece of paper with uh, that I had used as a palette. And I stuck that on the box card and used an off cut of an old print that didn't work out and as the spine and did the same for the back. So now it's like hard cover. So it was much easier for me to take it around, um, draw out in nature or in the backyard or wherever without it getting too floppy and too hard to deal with. So um, yeah, so this little one is like, it feels very me. Um, let's, let's do this sketchbook tour, shall we? Come on. Welcome to the very first page. Uh, very uh, glorious, no effort front page. All I did was some swatchy, just lay down some colors, threw it down there to, in ink, and I just did a little title, my, the date I started and the date it ended, and that's it. Moving on. <laughs> the next spread, which kind of like technically is the first spread, also a low effort, trying not to put too much hype in the first couple of pages because you know you put so much pressure on yourself to make the first drawings amazing and glorious so it sets the tone for the sketchbook. I just like to throw some color down and draw some comfort zone drawings. Drawings that I know I will like and that I enjoy making. So here I, I did my, my classic big soft curvy body flowers leaves and just testing out this brush pen. I'm just playing with that and I, I love I love it. So yeah, it's important to me that I don't put too much pressure on myself for the first couple of pages. Here are a couple of portraits that I did from life. I've been going to a portrait session a couple of times a month lately um, at, held at my little local gallery. And it's just a small group of people. We all get together and take turns drawing each other and each drawing is 20 minutes long. So one person will pose, we'll all draw them and then rotate around. So there's plenty, <laughs> there's plenty of portraits of me out there in some other people's piles. I think going to these portrait sessions have been really good for like skill building and like making sure my skills are still hot <laughs> and some days I have bad days some days I have good days generally my first portrait is like a warm-up portrait and my second portrait is always my best one of the day and then I get tired and my last portrait or two portraits usually is like half assed <laughs> um, and I used a mixture of uh, a pre blobinated background which I'll talk more about later Prismacolor pencils and this brush pen, which I mentioned a bit earlier. It's a Pentel brush pen. The one that you put ink in. So fun. Next page. I did, this is like a bit of a doodly page. I, half of it I worked on while I was on a Zoom call with a friend. Um, and then the next, you see a couple of drawings in the top right corner there, 30 second drawings from a Scribble Brigade session. Here's the next spread of that. Uh, where we got together and I curated a bunch of images of classic art and we just spent a few minutes on each drawing, drawing the subject of these classic art, classical art paintings. I used Prismacolor pencil, tried to use a different color every time and I didn't mind if I overlapped or got the proportions wrong. These scribble brigades that I do three times a month are just a way to play in our sketchbooks and to loosen up and try new things, try new techniques. Yeah. And they're, they're really fun. I, so I do 
two a month are patron only and then there's one a month which is public this is the following week so uh, there was a week there without any drawing in my sketchbook and it's the same theme but this one was one of the public ones so you can actually go back and watch if you want in my live sections here on youtube and and yeah i just tried to really focus on being loose and scribbly and i also focused on like negative space um, filling in the backgrounds rather than the person themselves in some cases so the paper of this sketchbook isn't particularly amazing it's very thin um, so it's not meant for wet media and all sorts of kind of mixed media stuff but I use it in that way anyway because I like to I like it when the paper gets crinkly and I like it when it bleeds through and gets all messy and stuff but the Prismacolor pencils on this paper are just like Mwah! amazing this is a page of little silly drawings of my my friend Lucy's dog Digby. He is such a good boy. He's a standard poodle and he has he actually does have rainbow feet foof, feet fluffs. Um, he is an art therapy dog and he is wonderful and so much fun to draw. <laughs> He's a silly boy. This is a bit of a nothing page, so uh, I'm going to skip over that. <laughs> Uh, the, the following few pages I went through a bit of a rampage of going through some of my old childhood photos of our dogs and repainting them, recreating them in my sketchbook and I was feeling very sensitive during this time. I was like, yeah, just I'd been through a few little things that were kind of hurting my heart so I wanted to spend time with my childhood dogs in a really comfy way by drawing them and I wanted to give myself zero pressure I didn't want to let myself like overthink it so it's super messy and loose and scribbly and I had a lot of fun doing it I played with layers and negative space and positive space and a mixture of acrylic gouache and prismacolor pencils I had I just had a really lovely time hanging out with my old pets in this way and this one <laughs> this one you can get as a print i'm just releasing it today so that's fun if you like the sketchbook kind of look as well it's got a bit of that um and the painterly effect i don't know it's fun for all those childhood dog whimsy lovers this print could be a good one for you this is one i did on a live stream during a scribble brigade one day. It was a nice one too. This is an art hang party session where we drew each other's vacation photos. And uh, again, I used the brush pen using that one. Each drawing I think was two minutes or three minutes. So I had to work fast and really, really fun. And on the right hand side is a spread of comfort zone drawings. I just wanted to sit down and put my pen to paper and see what happened. I had pre-painted the page as well, uh, which I like to do. So while I'm painting something else, uh, instead of washing my brush completely before I change the colors, I like to scrub it on my sketchbook a little bit and then, you know, and then move on. So I'm not wasting as much paint. And I really like drawing on paper that has already been blobbed. I call it pre-blobinating the paper. It's just to eliminate that white page. Um, I like working on different colors because it feels good and it's nice and it's exciting and I love being informed by the shapes a little bit of what's happening or the colors of what's happening um, kind of being random seeing what like solutions I can come up with or just completely ignore them and draw directly on top and also see what happens there and this is a swatch page I usually actually do these swatch pages during the first couple of spreads just because it's easy to find usually um, but yeah on the left I have swatched a bunch of my Neo Color 2's and on the right are acrylic gouache and I write down the name and all that kind of stuff mainly so I don't double purchase a color that I already have because I mean we all do it I actually take photos of these swatch pages on my phone and add it to favorites on my phone so when I'm at an art supply store I can go and refer to the photo so I don't double buy art supplies. <laughs> so helpful. 
This is a self-portrait. I did this portrait using a mixture of handmade watercolors and inks. A few years ago, I did a self-portrait challenge where I tried to do one self-portrait self pretty much almost every day. It was a wild ride. It was interesting. I should probably do a sketchbook tour of that book one day, but I, I really enjoyed doing the self-portrait challenge a few years ago and I wanted to continue doing it, but on just like a lower level. So I try to do a self-portrait a couple of times a month uh, in my sketchbooks. So you'll see a few of them along the way. And I really like how they kind of are little journals, like they depict the feeling, the vibe of that day. It's also really weird drawing yourself. I have this, I'm almost like disassociated when I draw myself. It's just a face. It's not necessarily my face. I don't know what I look like, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's a, it's a battle. It's a battle, but it's interesting. And it's a subject that I always have on hand. Here's a bit of a play page. I was brainstorming some ideas for my calendar for the year. Every year during Inktober or uh, Arttober, I make a little series of illustrations, which I then turn into a printed calendar. And uh, I was just coming up with ideas at this point in time. So my idea originally was play, uh, Perfect Places to Live, which is a series I still want to do. So that's not kind of on the back burner for now, but I actually changed my idea. You'll see it later on, but um, my new idea is Adventures Over Leaves, which you have probably seen some videos of. Um, but yeah, this is a really fun spread. Pre-blobinated page and I just went over using a dark blue marker texture. This is a spread from my portrait sessions and I really didn't like this portrait. So I stuck an old drawing over the top of it. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that happens sometimes. <laughs> Again, pre-blobinated with acrylic gouache and then I used a pencil and the brush pen that I mentioned earlier. And there's Jill on the left. Jill is my favorite person to draw during my portrait sessions. She's so great. Um, and when I got home, I was still in the zone. I still wanted to do some portraits. I felt like drawing. So uh, I was scrolling through Instagram and I came across the wonderful So Lazo and their beautiful artwork and their beautiful portraits. I love their face. I love their fashion. So I went ahead and I did a portrait of them and had a really good time with that. The background was already painted with this like mustardy olive color and I love the way that color and reds and pinks look together. So I'm really happy with this page. Um, and I was still in the zone even after that. So I reached out to my darling friend Mel. Um, she sent me a couple of selfies and I drew a picture of her. It was really nice. Her favorite colors are like purples and blues and stuff. So I had to honor her with a purely purple portrait. <laughs> Um, and this is another art hang party sesh where we drew insects and butterflies and stuff. I used the brush pen and Prismacolor pencils. This was a spread I created while chatting with my friend um, on Zoom. Uh, we, we get together and we do art hangouts together every so often. And I just wasn't feeling like drawing today. <laughs> I was feeling really burnt out. She gave me the idea of looking back through some old photos and redrawing old photos. So I went through and I looked at some photos that I took when I was in Scotland. Then I wanted to kind of make it weird with weird color combos and see if I can make it work. So that's sort of what I came up with. A couple of sheepies on a hill using highlighter pink and like baby blues and yellows and stuff like that. And on the other page is just some swatches, which I was going to originally draw over, but I left it because I think this spread looks nice just as it is. I used a acrylic gouache. On this page, it was, a, it was the same day. Um, I wanted to continue on with playing with some interesting color palettes, like restrain myself and see what I can come up with within those restraints. So I gave myself this color palette of light blue, kind of a teal, then a really dark green and this olivey mustardy color. Um, and I went through and I looked at some photos and I painted some little landscapes using only those colors. And I really like how they came out. They're really moody, really interesting, really filmic. Um, yeah, good challenges. I find that like restraining yourself, putting yourself in a box makes you more creative. And then here we have another self-portrait. Again, I 
just pulled out a few colors at random and uh, gave them a go. I really like how this one turned out. It's really fun and all the stars in there. It's light and scribbly and loose. I really like this color combo as well. And there's like that pop of orangey red on the mouth is just like Mwah, perfecto. I, I really like that little touch. But I feel like if I had put more red into it, it would have taken away. So it's nice to just have one little random spot. It wasn't random, but one little spot on the lips and a little bit on the cheek it was just enough for it to zing in a really interesting way. This spread was from another live portrait session, which I really wasn't feeling that day. <laughs> so let's just go to the next page. Well, this was a fun spread, uh, lots of colors, lots of shapes, and this beautiful drawing of a whale by my wonderful friend Z, the creative, who is a tattoo artist. Uh, they designed this whale for me and I got this little whale tattooed. Whales are really important to me. They're one of my favorite animals. They were like my first childhood obsession. Um, during the days of Windows 94 or Windows 95, there was this program called The Secret Life of Whales and it was basically just like a bunch of little clips that you could unlock of whales and I was obsessed with it. So I had to get my little whale by my beautiful friend Z. <laughs> Here's another play page, just some scribbles, just some flowers, just some, just some good pants. Um, I really like these kind of pages. They're just kind of nothingness, but it's where I can let my brain wander around for a while and do stuff. And sometimes while I'm doing them, I'm like, oh, these look terrible. But actually looking back at them, they're fun. They're loose. They're free. Just because I don't necessarily like how they look doesn't mean that, yeah, it doesn't mean that I like hate myself or anything. It's always good to just try new things and let your brain wander around for a while. Having pages like this reminds you that it's meant to be fun, that drawing is meant to be fun. This was another scribble brigade that was really fun. It was the opening week of Barbie, of the new Barbie film. So I went and I found a bunch of iconic Barbies on Pinterest and we just sat down and drew a bunch of Barbies for an hour and a half and it was so fun. Barbie is amazing and outrageous and I adore her. I used a really fine biro pen to do this and I added a couple of pencil details. What a fun couple of pages, that was a fun day. I think we did each drawing in three minutes, I want to say. And this is just a spread of colors, which I had laid down on my sketchbook while I was working on another painting. And I originally intended to go over and illustrate lots of different things um, over this, but I just, I like how it looked. I like how there's just a break in the sketchbook of just a bunch of colors. So I didn't end up illustrating over the top of it, decided to just leave it. It's fun to look at, I think, and like going through it and seeing which colors zing and which colors don't zing. And here's another play page, which I'm, you know, not the most aesthetically pleasing thing in the world, but it's cute. It's fun. It's playful. Here's another scribble brigade where we drew a bunch of vintage sewing patterns. So a lot of them were from around the 40s and then some from the 60s and 70s as well with a pre blobinated page. And I drew the drawings in a black Prismacolor pencil, which I never really used before. I don't really use the black Prismacolor pencils, but I got into it during this session and I like the texture and the paper is so smooth. So the way the pencil just like rolls over the paper is really nice. And there's the second part of the Scribble Brigade. Some swatches down the side, which I had done later in the day. Uh, but yeah, that was a good sesh. More color swatches from some painting I was working on, I don't even know. Um, and once that had dried, I had gone over the top using the black Prismacolor pencil again. Uh, some life drawings, which I did while watching GES Draw Party on YouTube. They're my favorite place to go and do little life drawings and stuff. Well, they're not from life, they're from the video, but you know, it doesn't matter. Um, and they're all one minute long. If if I could just do a whole day of one minute long life drawings, I'd be the happiest chap in town. That's for sure. I love doing one minute poses. They're really loose. They're silly. I love overlapping. I love doing them semi blind contour and just seeing what happens. Life drawing is so important. And I feel like everyone who wants to build skills and ideas and 
momentum should do life drawing once a week <laughs> another self-portrait I was on the roll with this black pencil so I wanted to do a self-portrait that used a lot of like drastic lighting um, and I don't know if the pre blobinated page in the background was really the smartest move here because it just looks really patchy and strange but anyway I tried new things yeah making portraits in green is always a bit risky <laughs> It always looks like alien but yeah I wanted to do something a bit awkward and a bit unusual for myself so yeah another play day lots of colors lots of scribbles the drawing in the top right corner is of my dog BB she had an ear surgery she had to get the tip of her ear cut off and um, she's fine now she just has like a little chunk missing out of her ear but she had this bandage around her head and the cone of shame for a few days and it was the saddest sight I had to document it. Poor little beep. <laughs> such a fun happy page with just such a sad dog in the top corner. This was another scribble brigade the following week um, with the theme vintage knitting patterns. Um, a lot of gems on the knitting vintage knitting pattern realm. A lot of these were like 50s, 60s, 70s patterns. So you know they're good. <laughs> I used an 80% grey Prismacolor, I think, on a pre blobinated page. Um, and each drawing was three to five minutes. I think five minutes. Oh, and this page, all that blue you see there, it was a colour that I created during this artist residency held by Lousy Ink and Dodgy Paper. I was invited to make my own pigment and I also made my own recycled paper with this crew and it was just it was great it was an amazing residency I enjoyed it so much anyway <laughs> I drew my scribble brigade over the top of it and I love how it looks what a good time another live portrait session there was only a couple of people that showed up so we used mirrors to draw ourselves and not my most flattering angle <laughs> <laughs> I was leaning it on like a chair on the ground it was very awkward so skip right past this one as well um, and this is the little flyer from my first ever solo exhibition which is which I called a forest stroll and it was at gallery humble in King Lake in Victoria and it was just such a lovely time it was amazing to see all my work which I don't, don't usually show people like my bigger paintings in one room for everyone to see it was pretty magical. Next page is a bit of a comfort zone page. I really liked the color palette of the pre blobinated colors on the bottom. And I used a Japanese uh, calligraphy ink using a brush to paint these little ladies. I think all these colors look nice together. Again, comfort zone drawings just to get me into the zone of drawing, painting, creating, working on whatever I'm working on that day. This was one of my favorite scribble brigades. What I did was I gathered a bunch of funny little vintage bits and bobs and bits of nature and stuff, um, images. And what we did was we set a timer for like three or two minutes per one. And we drew them and then cut them into squares and arranged them on our sketchbooks to create our very own little curio cabinets. This one's actually a live stream that was for the public. So you can watch this and make your own curio cabinet as well. Loved, love, love, love this session. It was so fun um, and I love the idea. I'm really proud of myself for this idea and I'd love to do some more. Another play page, I stuck one of my stickers in the top and just did some drawing. I used a brown gel pen and some Prismacolor pencil. And another play page, I usually like to pre blobinate my page and draw over the top of it um, when I'm planning for a bigger painting. I like what I mentioned before, while I'm planning a painting, I'm making all these little sketches that <laughs> can potentially come out just bad and um, sort of hiding those ones with pre blobinated colors everywhere shields my heart <laughs> from looking at my bad drawings. But I just love, I love how these busy pages look. They're really fun. So here I am figuring out um, how I'm going to make an artwork using the lousy ink color I created, which I mentioned earlier. 
This was another Scribble Brigade sesh where we did a random character prompt generator thing where I wrote out a bunch of different describing words and actions and pulled out three for each drawing and we all created an interesting little character for that. Um, so for, for example, there was a bug riding a horse with the house on his back or there was um, a, mush uh, a mushroom wearing gloves and a clown. It was really fun. <laughs> the blues in the background of this spread was the color palette from the painting that I had planned on the previous page with the thistles and stuff. I had quite a lot of the blue paint on my palette so I actually ended up doing a self-portrait using even more of the leftover blues and purples um, and the lousy ink color that I made and I did this self-portrait and I really love the combination of really loose sketchy scribbly mark marks um, paired with the kind of tight careful marks around the eyes and the nose and the mouth. I really like this portrait I think I captured my likeness quite well while also playing with a color that I find quite difficult to deal with sometimes. <laughs> I have a video about me making a self-portrait with the color blue tackling both um, difficult subjects blue and self-portrait. It also has a nice flow to the page like I try not to curate my spreads too much but I feel like this one has a really nice flow to it. Also included some sketches for, for a painting and I stuck one of my stickers in. This is when I cemented my idea of Adventures Over Leaves. Um, if you watch the video, you will know that I actually changed my mind the day before the 1st of October. I had a whole nother plan going, um, which I didn't really sketch too much out in my sketchbook. I did it digitally on my iPad, but when October got close, like a day before October started, I decided I didn't like my original plan and I decided to do something different. And that is where Adventures Over Leaves was born. It was based on an old zine that I had made about 10 years ago or so. So here I am like planning a bunch of ideas. Do I want my characters to be huge and the leaves small or do I want my leaves to be huge and the characters small? Just trying to come up with how it's going to be a concise theme over 12 illustrations. This was done on a little solo art date when I went out to the forest, um, Josephette Gully in King Lake. I um, did this while I went to pick up all my artwork from the exhibition and I took myself out to this little foresty spot and I just scribbled away with my colours. Yeah, just a nice, nice little solo day. <laughs> so this spread is basically a library of poses for my Adventures Over Leaves illustration series. Um, what I like to do is just brain dump a bunch of ideas in one spot in like thumbnail sized drawings. So I was just trying to come up with all these different poses which I could then use later for illustrations in the series. and. Um, it helps a lot to do this sort of thing for myself because if I'm doing a series I get tired of coming up with ideas my brain gets tired so it's a nice it's nice to have a place where I can go back and be like mm, which pose do I feel like doing today and I'll pick one and I'll make an illustration around that so yeah it's basically a library of little brain dump poses some of them some of them come out really silly which is the best thing honestly a lot of the poses I just come up with in my head or like I imagine how I would pose myself and I draw it um, or sometimes I will reference different poses from I don't know like models on Pinterest or something like that but generally it's all from my brain. Here's another Scribble Brigade. The theme that we did this week was animals in classic art and I used my Neo Color 2 pastels watered down and use like paint, like watercolor. Each drawing was three to five minutes. I think we went up and down in times. I went into it knowing that I wanted to paint it and be loose and use weird and wonderful colors and just splash it all around and see what happens. Um, and what happened is that I accidentally skipped a spread in the middle of it. So 
This spread here is from the next week's Scribble Brigade where it was blue themed and I just gathered a bunch of images and all we were allowed to use was blue. Again, tackling my fear of blue <laughs> head on. Um, and then this page was back to the past week of uh, Animals and Classic Art. And I really love this page. I love the fruity tropical colors of this page um, and the composition of the deers and just the weird and wonderful colors I used and put all together and how loose it is. It just reminds me to play in my sketchbook and not have to fill every single moment of each page either, just to let things be as they are sometimes. And there's a little pedal, so that's nice. <laughs> Yeah, doing these timed sessions, they're such a good way to loosen up and to paint the things or draw the things that are important to the story of the drawing rather than working on the whole thing equally. Like some bits aren't as important to the story of the illustration and some bits are more important to the story of the illustration. If that makes sense. Like it teaches you what's important, what's not important to draw to get the illustration as readable as possible. And I just made it extra spicy by deciding to do a billion different colors. <laughs> this was something I designed for my art prompt day, which I do once a month for my patrons. And I won't tell you the whole thing because you're going to have to become a patron to know all those interesting secrets. But this is a tool for picking colors, essentially, um, to go back on and use whenever you need. So that was really fun. And I just like the way the spreads look filled with colors and patterns and interesting things to look at. Even if the colors don't necessarily go, that's kind of the point of the art prompt day as well. But yeah, I really like how these spreads look. They're really satisfying to me and they were fun to do because it was like I could zone out, sit down and just play with colors and color relationships and shapes and be a bit messy and wonky. Yeah, I went pretty hardcore. I did a quite a lot of pages. <laughs> This is another Scribble Brigade. It wasn't a day that I was really feeling it fully. It was, um, the theme was vintage pottery. So we went and looked at pottery from the 50s and 60s. I used the Neo Color 2s as watercolor. Here's another live portrait session. This one we did outside. And so we were all battling with flies and dappled light and uh, heat. So not my best sesh. It's okay, let's skip past it. <laughs> But I actually quite like this portrait of Bill. He's very difficult to draw. I always struggle drawing Bill, but I feel like I got his face in this one. And I like the colors. On the right there are some flowers. And on the next page um, is a page of the flowers painted. This was actually a design for a wedding card that I made for really good friends who got married. And um, yeah, this card I made was using this design and I kind of cut out elements of the cards so that the flowers on the inside of the card revealed different shapes and stuff. I don't know if I explained that right. But anyway, I liked it so much I decided to fill a spread of the flowers as well. And it was a really nice way to be loose and just playful and using interesting colors. It was a play day. I think I did this while I was listening to an audio book before I went to bed. This was a really fun day. I was in the mood to draw something, but I wanted to challenge myself a little bit. So I asked a few questions over on my Instagram stories. And anyway, have a look at the reel and you'll see what I mean. Yesterday, I asked you on Instagram for help making a new illustration with a few restrictions. And you told me it had to be an illustration. It had to be using mixed media. I had to use only five colors and there is a 40 minute time limit. So here I am swatching the colors that I picked, which were from a previous art prompt day, which I do with my patrons. Sketch it out, set the timer, and I'm off. I did it in my sketchbook, so it's sort of like loose, no pressure, but still fun place to make an illustration. And I started off by sort of blocking in the main colors and then going in and adding some details with the darker colors and layering. I sort of allowed myself to do a wash version of the colors as well so you can see that I did the yellow and then I did a half water wash of the orange on the leaves. Time was ticking, I was like I need to get onto the next medium so I pulled out my Prisma colors and did a few little details here and there and then I grabbed my Neo Color 2s and did a few extra little details. It was hard because the paint was still wet and I couldn't do it properly. 
<laughs> anyway, here's the final illustration. It was a really fun challenge. I reckon you should try it too. This painting actually got a bit dirty from me drawing on the back of this page um, a, a few days after I finished this. So I went back with a, a white Posca fine tipped marker and I and I filled in the spots of the face and other bits that got a bit messy just to preserve the drawing a little bit. This, <laughs> this is a terrible page. I actually made a video for my patrons where I tried out a whole different bunch of art hacks. The video goes for like an hour um, and one of the art hacks was to do with uh, using a kneadable eraser for negative space and highlights and stuff like that. So I decided to do a portrait. It was the first time I'd used charcoal probably since high school. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. This was also from the art hacks video that I made. It was all about tape peel and doing tape peels that don't peel off your paper. <laughs> I really like this page. I really love the color palettes of this page. And um, there's a little orange sticker there. I'll tag the maker. This was a page that I did. I did on a Sunday morning after I got back from a market. I had bought a bunch of flowers, popped them into a vase and just played with layering, negative space. I So I used acrylic gouache and Neocolor 2 markers and some pencil, I think. Just a bit of a fun splashy page. This was a planning page for one of my newest artworks, Floralagium, which was a Patreon exclusive artwork a couple of months back. And I really liked, I really like this artwork. I feel like this artwork was something that I've been holding on to for years. That was nice to finally get out. Yeah, it was just a really good time. I had a really good experience making this artwork. And on the right is like the picnic blanket and the flower designs for the artwork. Again, playing with weird and wonderful color palette combinations, trying to make colors work that don't necessarily work in theory. But yeah, I don't know. I really like the spread. It's very cute. Makes my brain happy. And then I went ahead and I just did a few more pages like this as well with these flowers. Just trying to design what I wanted the flowers to look like for my artwork. Um, and yeah, these pages get really messy all the time. You can see all the little debris from the colors, the paint colors. It's because I use the Neocolor 2s as watercolor so they can reactivate, they can like transfer which I don't actually mind in a sketchbook. I don't mind. I'm okay with the messy stuff that kind of goes with it. But if I was doing a final artwork, I would I would not be okay <laughs> with the messiness. This one turned into a little self-portrait, which is kind of cute. This was a spread I painted on a day that I was feeling a bit sad. I don't remember why, but I can tell I was feeling sad by the drawings on the left and the feeling. And I remember all I wanted to do was just put paint to page and play mindlessly so I did all these little semicircles and let all the paint bleed into each other and yeah it's messy it was essential for my heart here's another self-portrait I for some reason decided to do it through the middle of the page so it kind of looks a bit warped and weird but that's okay I really like this portrait I did it using the Neo Color 2s as watercolor and I used some Prismacolor pencils as well again I really like the combination of super loose loose vague lines and colors mixed with the more tightly drawn or painted sections like the eyes and the nose and the mouth it just moves your focal point into the place that's that's the most interesting which is the middle of the face and then all the blurriness and wispiness and scribbliness kind of draws your eye in towards the tighter areas yeah i really like that self-portrait Here's another play page. I actually got some new ink. I got a cyan, magenta and a yellow ink and I was just playing with what colors, what color combinations can come from that, from those three colors um, and a couple little doodles using my glass dip pen. Just a play page, a swatch page. I find these pages always so satisfying. I'm just obsessed with color. <laughs> Here's another scribble brigade. On this day we did a random street view generator thing so I found a website random street view something like that and uh, we just drew a bunch of random street views for an hour it was nice we started with some 30 second drawings and worked our way up to five minute drawings and I used Tombow markers uh, I go through phases with my art supplies and I really like burn myself out with one art supply and then I don't talk to it again for a year or two but I'm back on the Tombow train <laughs> 
I love them. They're so fun. Really fun with layering, really good colors, and really fun to use on this sketchbook. Really like swoopy and swishy. It was good. And this is a spread I did while planning an artwork uh, of, an, of a unicorn. My childhood love. I actually did this for my friend Mel who you met earlier on in my sketchbook, The Purple Portrait. Um, she just had a baby and Mel has a childhood love of unicorns. I have a childhood love of unicorns. So her baby <laughs> is going to have a childhood love of unicorns. <laughs> it has been said. Anyway, it was really nice to go and do something that fulfilled my childhood brain. It was good. And I really find this spread satisfying. A lot of action going on, a lot of blobs, a lot of trial and error, error a lot of figuring out how horses' bodies look. <laughs> and coming up with color palettes for the final piece too. And here you can actually buy a print yourself if you wanna. They look good. So here, here it is an A5 and A4. Um, and I love how these turned out. They're so fun. They're like medieval, magical, unicorny, sweet childhood wonder. <laughs> this is a fun page where I just did a page of green portraits. There's this app that I use called Sketchy and I've been using it for, I don't know, I'm going to say 15 plus years. And it's just a bunch of people who upload their selfies that you're free to use to reference and um, I jump on there once a year or so to just smash out a few portraits. I like doing these portraits every so often because one I like get the feel for wanting to do portraits and it's all I can think of for that day so I have to do it and two I really like to push an illustrative look. Sometimes I like to push and pull forms to try and make a portrait interesting in different ways to like accentuate a beautifully tipped nose or big eyes or small ears or whatever. Yeah, it's just a fun game for me. <laughs> so I used uh, two Tombow markers, a light green and like an apple green and uh, this dark green brush pen that I have from Pentel. I start with the really light green as a sketch and uh, then I do the medium green and then I do the outlines with the brush pen and then I go back and fill in some more spots using the medium green. This was another Scribble Brigade session, but it was a bit different this time. I did a teaching session where I wanted to practice my teaching skills, my workshop skills. Um, and the theme was learning to draw a field of flowers using a layered technique um, and also negative space and yeah, color layering and that sort of thing. So, so I did these pages while I was on stream just teaching everyone how I like to layer and stuff. I use Tombow markers, which are perfect for this technique, but you can do it with any medium. So that's available on my Patreon if you wanna learn how to do it too. It was a really good session, really chill. <laughs> there are a few more portraits here on the left that I did referencing selfies on the Sketchy app. On the right is a little cut out flower from another art prompt day sesh that I did with my patrons where I wanted to look at negative and positive space. I was trying to kind of get people to think about negative and positive space because I love myself some negative space and physically cutting out a, sh a shape is a really interesting way to learn about negative and positive space. So that was that, that little sesh. And I had to stick it, stick it in my sketchbook because I couldn't just throw it away. The following few pages are from a real life drawing session in real life with real people. <laughs> so a good friend of mine, it was their birthday and their partner gifted them with a life drawing sesh at home. So they hired uh, this lovely model and all the friends got together in their lounge room and we just drew this model from life for ages and it was so lovely. I love life drawing. I love it. I can't say it enough. I can't even explain how much it helped me build confidence and build skills in every way that you can't imagine life drawing would do. Again, here's me saying to you, do life drawing if you want to build your skills quickly. It's, it's seriously the best. Um, and yeah, I used Tombow markers again on the Tombow marker train still. <laughs> we ended the session on a few quick poses again, just as a cool down. On this spread, I stuck a bunch of my stickers, which are actually up in the shop now as well, which you can get yourself. They're from the Nice Places to Have a Nap series I did a couple years ago. 
And here's another play page I filled in while I was working on a different painting. Again, I was going to illustrate over the top of it, but I decided I just liked having a page like this. <laughs> kind of breaks up the sketchbook and gives you a breath of fresh air while looking through. And another Scribble Brigade. Again, it was a random street view generator maps thing. I used Tombow markers and this time I wanted to try and find a, a color palette and stick with that color palette. So I started with greens and like these purpley pinks and then I ended up combining them on the longer poses. We started with one minute drawings and made our way up to five minutes and I think we ended on a 10 minute drawing. Tombow markers again. I really like, I really like this session. I had a good time this session. Again, these scribble brigades are meant to be us leaning into the messiness, loosening up and playfulness, trying something new trying something different. It's always fun. It's a fun way to hang out with people. I love parallel play and Scribble Brigade is the perfect parallel play platform for me. Here's the next week's Scribble Brigade. So I didn't do anything in my sketchbook for a whole week, but during this session, I actually had a really sore hand. I was struggling with repetitive strain injury in my hand. So I wanted to use a material that was swoopy and loose and the Neocolor 2 pastels are perfect for that. So we worked on a bunch of screenshots from Studio Ghibli films and each pose was five minutes long. I just scribbled wildly and recklessly and it was wonderful. So I filled up two spreads with that session. Also, Studio Ghibli backgrounds are so dreamy. I'm such an animation background nerd. Ghibli just is the master. This is just another swatchy play page. Again, I wanted to draw some unicorns <laughs> and I used a bunch of different materials as well. There's some Tombow markers, there's some brush pen, there's some pencil um, and ink. All the stars and scribbles and stuff in the bottom right corner are from the inks that I mentioned a little, a few pages a little while ago. And another little self portrait. I did this one using the inks that I just mentioned and I wanted to particularly lean into using colors that don't really make sense on a face like there's a lot of like there's greens in my eye bags and like the blues and greens of the shadows of the glasses and the shadows under the hair yeah anyway I just I just had fun playing with different color combinations and letting them kind of bleed into each other and being extra loose and scribbly with this one I feel like this is quite a successful self-portrait I also just got my glasses a, a, a few months prior to this drawing and I suffered from nausea since I was 17 years old and I can manually focus and unfocus both of my eyes and I didn't realize that wasn't really a normal thing <laughs> um, so now I have glasses full time <laughs> anyway these drawings are me trying to figure out also how to incorporate my glasses into my self portraits Here's another art hang party hosted by Melissa. Um, I used a brown brush pen and Prismacolor pencils. These are all vacation photo snaps from different people. That was a cute session. Now we're on to the, the last seven spreads of the sketchbook. I actually made a full video of me finishing the last seven spreads of this sketchbook, which you can watch if you haven't already. Um, so this first, the first of the seven are these acrylic gouache paintings I did. Uh, train tracks on one side and just some like mushrooms and lichens on a little branch not my favorite spread in the sketchbook but it's still important to just put brush to paper sometimes I also did a scribble brigade sesh here so same as last week this was a Studio Ghibli themed one and I used my Prismacolor pencils and I tried different compositions. So you can see on each side, there's two vertical and two horizontal. The horizontal ones were difficult because they were wide. Yeah, I, I just went at it, went scribbly and I really like some of the details. I was still having my RSI pain in my hand. So I just allowed myself to be extra loose and not careful. This was one of my favorite times in my sketchbook, in the whole sketchbook. I, actually, last year I did an art prompt day with my patrons where I got them to make a collage using paper that they had pre-painted with all these different colors. And I wanted to redo that myself because I remembered back then while I was making the art prompt day artwork as an example I was having I was having a bad art day and I was like I'm just gonna get through this art prompt thing um, but actually I 
got into the zone and I had the best time ever. So I was feeling similar way during this day. Wasn't in the mood to make art, but had to make an art. And so I did the same thing and I ended up having the best day ever. And I'm really happy with how the, the particularly the bunch of flowers looks on the left. Um, so I turned it into sticker and a print. You can buy the prints and they look so good. It looks like an actual collage that you can peel off if you wanted to, <laughs> but you can't because it's print. Oh, I really like this spread as well. This is a painting of my dog Pia in the forest and I really wanted to focus on a lot of negative space and positive space to build up the forest environment. Um, and I used the, the same ink that I mentioned before. And on the other page, I did a bunch of pansies. They're a lot more loose and scribbly and I added a few little um, Prismacolor pencil elements in that mustard color. I really like how this spread turned out. Makes me happy. I also made prints of this little doggy in the forest and I wanted to keep the sketchbook vibes alive by adding the swatches at the bottom. So that's a cute one. Another self portrait using the same inks, but more purpley blue tones. I feel like I lost the likeness a little bit. I went a bit like uh, googly eyes, I think <laughs> in this one. And I wanted to keep playing with the weird greens and blues and unusual unexpected colors especially around my eyes uh, eyebrows and eye ring bags <laughs> yeah i wasn't in the mood for putting too much effort in on this day so i kind of filled up the rest of the page with flowers and scribbles and stars and stuff this is the second last spread of my sketchbook and i wanted to do something that was within my comfort zone and that includes uh pre-blobinated backgrounds on this one, I sort of focused on making little strips of color palettes, different color palettes. And then on top, drawing my comfort zone style of big, curvy, soft bodies and flowers and blobs and kind of abstract shapes and stuff. I used the glass dip pen with a super duper dark green uh, calligraphy ink. Just the layering of random colors and shapes with uh, illustrations is nice. And finally, the last spread. I wanted to do something similar to what I did on the previous spread with a colorful blobby background and an ink drawing on top. But I kind of did a yin and yang, blue and blue and peach kind of opposites, opposites attract thing. Um, and these ones were a stream of conscious. I just put my pen down and started drawing and whatever happened, happened. Yeah, working stream of consciousnessly is really nice process for me so yeah i think this is a nice little ending to my sketchbook i really like this sketchbook i had it for a good six months but i'm excited to start a new one i've got something really interesting coming up to show you in the next video you made it to the end thank you so much for being here and if you enjoyed what you saw like subscribe all those good things like they actually for real help me out a lot i know you're sick of hearing it but it's true it's true and i just want to do a great big thank you to my dearest patrons so much of my patreon life and ideas and everything is inside this sketchbook you're all there for me and it's such a good community and i love being able to make artwork for you and for me for you you know what i mean uh yeah thank you for your support you're just the best cutest all right thank you for watching I will see you, I'll see you next time. Okay, toot.